You're watching The Daily Climate Show on Sky News. On today's programme... Temperatures of 40 degrees will become the norm. A warning that the UK is heating up fast, as last year is the third hottest on record. Ground zero in the climate crisis. The Arctic is warming three times faster than anywhere else on the planet, as it experiences never-before events. And extreme weather around the world, with wildfires in Greece, Lebanon and Turkey, floods in Bangladesh and snow in parts of Brazil for the first time in 65 years. Hello and welcome to the UK's only daily climate news show, where we track the changes happening to our world right now and meet those coming up with the solutions. And it is a day of particularly stark warnings about those changes to our world. We're going to start here in the UK, where we have a clearer picture of just how quickly the climate is warming. The Met Office says the country is already experiencing extreme weather because of climate change. And we could regularly see summer temperatures above 40 degrees Celsius, even if global heating is limited to an average of one and a half degrees. There's clear evidence the UK is quickly getting hotter, wetter and sunnier. Let's have a look. Now, last year was the third hottest since records began. Ten of the warmest years have all come since 2002. And the last 30 years have been 0.9 degrees warmer than the preceding 30. A trend evident across all months and all parts of the UK. But the greatest warming has been across the East Midlands and East Anglia where average annual temperatures have increased by more than one degree Celsius. That's in line with projections showing greater warming in the south of England. Now, the areas with the least warming are around western coastal fringes and parts of Northern Ireland and Scotland. Rainfall, though, has increased as well. Over the last three decades, the UK has been 6% wetter on average than the three decades before. And six of the 10 wettest years have occurred since 1998. 2020 was the fifth wettest on record. Our climate correspondent, Hannah Thomas-Peter, reports. Avonmouth on the River Severn. Flooding is a part of life here, but it's getting worse. That's why the government's chosen this place to announce how it's going to spend billions of pounds on flood protection schemes across the country. This is to better protect our uh, homes, our communities, our businesses uh, and make us more resilient to climate change. We know we're going to get more extreme weather events. We need to be prepared for them. Despite the influx of cash, eventually hard decisions will have to be made about who and what is protected from the rising water. Roughly one in every five households is at risk of flooding. There may come a time in the future where, as part of that building back better, we need to consider whether we move to better places where the risk of flooding is reduced. Global warming is reshaping our world in other ways too. In terms of sheer destructive power, rain and flooding often grabs the headlines in the UK but climate change is also driving up our temperatures. At the Met Office headquarters in Exeter, they've been tracking some worrying patterns. This is where operational meteorologists... Um, Senior climate scientist Mike Kendon has just written a report revealing that 2020 was the first year since records began to rank in the top 10 for heat, rainfall and sunshine. Climate change isn't just something that's going to happen in the future. Climate change is something that is happening now. We see that very clearly in our observations. As a scientist, I'm worried at look, looking at these observations. Um, you know, I'm a dad. I, I worry about the future for my children. The Royal Meteorological Society has warned that even a small increase in global warming could mean British summertime temperatures reaching 40 degrees. In this country, the race to adapt to the effects of climate change has only just begun. Anna Thomas-Peter, Sky News, Avonmouth. Well, there's also a warning. The Arctic is warming three times faster than anywhere else on Earth, making it ground zero for the climate crisis. Scientists say the area is experiencing never-before events that threaten us all because what happens in the Arctic drives climate change around the world. Let's take a closer look at the figures. 
average temperatures in the Arctic have increased by 0.81 degrees per decade over the last 30 years, more than three times the global average, which is 0.23 degrees Celsius. There's also concerns that sea level rises created by melting ice sheets in the region would dwarf any previous warnings. The Greenland ice sheet alone, for instance, could raise global sea levels by seven and a half metres. Meanwhile, the warm weather conditions that would lead to the thawing of permafrost in the far north are already occurring, 75 years ahead of predictions. That research is by the Climate Crisis Advisory Group, which says the window of time to repair the climate is closing fast. Sir David King is the group's chair. The analysis is showing that even by mid-century, if we take Southeast Asia as a region of the world where sea level rises due to melting ice in, uh, on Greenland, due to melting ice elsewhere on the planet, uh, raising sea levels globally, uh, we are going to see Southeast Asia, maybe 100 million, maybe 300 million refugees because regions of that world will be underwater too regularly. Well, in a moment, we'll look at the political implications. But first, to our climate change correspondent, Hannah Thomas-Peter. Hannah, a day of serious warnings. Just how significant is this? I think what you're seeing from the scientific community is that we are increasingly stepping towards the unknown. And there is a sense of panic about that because it's hard to control outcomes that you can't model uh, or predict. Uh, particularly on the UK side, we've had this very serious report from the Met Office saying that climate change is already here and impacting the United Kingdom, particularly when it comes to extreme rainfall and extreme heat and that more is much likely to come. And experts have already said today that they're not sure that our critical infrastructure, our roads, our bridges, our rail lines, our hospitals and so on, are built to withstand what is to come. And then more globally, of course, we've had this very serious report from Sir David King, former chief scientific advisor to the government. Uh, and he has said uh, very clearly that the Arctic is in, is in real trouble, is uh, warming and the ice is melting much faster than, than was predicted. And that can in turn mess with all kinds of uh, systems that are supposed to regulate the planet, like, for example, uh, the jet stream trapping uh, extreme heat events and extreme storms in place for longer and increasing the potential damage. So the scientific community is stepping up its urgency, uh, stepping up its calls uh, for action and just hoping that the politicians and world leaders will listen. Hannah, thank you. Appreciate your analysis. Well, there is more focus than ever on what global leaders can do to tackle the climate crisis we face. The United States Special Presidential Envoy for Climate is in London and spoke with former UK Prime Minister Tony Blair a little earlier. Glasgow is the last best hope to avoid the worst consequences and to avoid the planet changing in ways that are even hard to predict. I mean, as the, as the Himalayas Glaciers are melting. Arctic is melting four times faster than it was 10 years ago and more than anywhere else. The greatest warming on the planet is in the Arctic. When the scientists and the experts are telling you these are the consequences if you don't do X, Y, or Z, the, the sort of rule of prudence governs the notion that you ought to be ahead of the curve on those things. Well, let's cross now to our chief political correspondent, John Craig. John, it's been a day of extraordinary warnings from scientists and indeed from John Kerry, but it's just less than 100 days now until the UK hosts the Global Climate Change Conference COP26. Is there any sign that global leaders and politicians are going to step up and rise to the occasion? Well, not for the first time. The uh, British government is likely to be accused of mixed messages. Now, uh, when he appeared a few weeks ago before the uh, uh, Liaison Committee of Senior MPs in the Commons, uh, the Prime Minister was quizzed on his uh, uh, climate change and COP26 strategy. He said he would uh, unveil that before the summit, which takes place in Glasgow. But from the Prime Minister uh, came a pretty uh, firm warning that he won't allow domestic bills to go up to pay for greener energy. Energy. He said, we can't have a situation in which ordinary homeowners are suddenly faced with an unexpected and unreasonable cost. It's got to be a solution that's affordable, works for people, 
At the moment, the prices of uh, greener energy are too high. He said the government was determined to keep the bills low. That was a priority. And yet, from the Environment Secretary, George Eustace, who has today uh, unveiled uh, what the government calls a flood and coastal erosion investment plan to tackle uh, flooding, uh, he's uh, pledged to tackle climate change to uh, uh, cope with flooding. He's uh, talked about how climate change means a more extreme weather, a higher risk of flooding events and coastal erosion. So the government is determined to tackle uh, climate change in that respect, and yet the Prime Minister is insisting he won't allow domestic bills to go up to tackle climate change. Very interesting indeed, John. Thank you. And we're tracking key climate change measures on our data dashboard. You can find that on the Sky News app and on the web at skynews.com forward slash climate. Well, there may be warnings of more extreme weather to come in the UK, but there are devastating examples happening around the world right now as well. From wildfires in Turkey, Greece and Lebanon to floods in Bangladesh and even snow in a part of Brazil for the first time in 65 years. Nesse <risos> momento, aqui em São Francisco de Paula, e as pessoas vibrando nas ruas. Volta e meia, a gente ouve os gritos de emoção. Em today's other climate news, the Met Office says the first named storm of the summer will hit the UK tonight. Forecasters are predicting Storm Evert will bring unseasonably strong winds and heavy rain to southern parts of the country, with winds of up to 75 miles per hour expected. An amber warning has been issued for Cornwall and the Scilly Isles. And the UK's first ever bison rangers have been selected to help introduce the animals into the country. Tom Gibbs and Donovan Wright were picked from more than a thousand applicants from around the world to look after the herd. The four European bison will live in Bleen Woods, an ancient woodland in Kent, to help restore the natural habitat of the area. Well, we've talked a lot today about the threat from global heating and how climate change is changing our world right now. But what can we do to reduce our impact and slow the process? Well, someone who knows more about this is Bethany Watson, an apprentice at BAE Systems, a company that works with Fuel Change, a platform for young people to get involved with climate action projects. Bethany, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us. Why was it important to you to work for a company that has these sorts of climate change issues that you can work on? And what are you focusing on at the moment? It was especially important for me to work for a company like BAE Systems, um, who has climate change um, at the forefront of their minds all of the time. And they widely encourage their apprentices to get involved with things like fuel change. Um, so myself and a team of uh, seven other apprentices um, joined the first round of fuel change last year. Um, and we worked with multiple different corporations in order to try and solve their um, climate change issues. Um, so we came up with an initiative that would take scrap material, um, especially scrap material from um, decommissioned aircrafts that are sitting in plain graveyards, and turn that material into small vertical wind turbines that we put on in the sides of roads um, and on top of buildings. Um, so that we're creating something that is green and it's also producing green energy. Um, so there was many teams that were involved with this initiative um, and they were all trying to solve issues like this. Um, so it was especially important um, for us to you know, try and make change um, as individuals and as teams. Well, Bethany, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. We are keen to hear some positive news when it comes to climate change. Thank you very much indeed. Well, that's everything from us for today. Next time, we'll be looking at how Olympic athletes will have to adapt to rising global temperatures. You can find out more about that tomorrow here on The Daily Climate Show. See you then.